How you doing folks? I'm going to talk a little bit about gap shooting, the advantages and disadvantages to it from a target to a hunting situation. So we'll go ahead and, and explain what gap shooting is. Gap shooting is where, you know, however low, below the target to center that you got to hold to maintain to hit your target. The way you find your gaps would be, you know, set your target, I always, I did it from 10 yards and on back until I found my point on. So at, let's say at 10 yards, you hold your point dead center and it shoots up 24 inches high. That means you gotta hold 24 inches low to the ground or below the target. And it's an impact center and so on and so forth as you go back. But when you get to your point on and you get past that, that point on distance is where you hold your tip dead center of your target and it impacts there at a certain yard whether it's 30 yards 20 yards or 40 yards um, and if you get on back past your point on it's gonna you hold your tip air tip on the center and it drops low then you're gonna have to hold that much high to be able to impact center so that's which is called stacking uh, but anyway, in a tournament aspect, shoots and you learn your gaps, it can be very accurate as far as a point-wise point shoot, uh, 3D, indoor shoots, uh, and all that. And you, you still got to be able to, you know, guesstimate range fairly well. Uh, certain animals have a bigger, bigger, uh, uh, kill zone than others. Turkeys about the size of a tennis ball roughly and their heads about the same size so uh, uh, when you get into deer um, you're probably looking I'm guessing you know 16 by 16 something like that maybe less. Their lungs cover a lot. The biggest thing on the deer is the lungs so uh, you know when it comes to uh, hunting hunting I think gap shooting has a disadvantage especially when the animals are not steel. Uh, the only advantage it'll have if you hunt over a food plot and whatever game you're hunting is not moving a whole lot. So uh, turkey hunting would be a nightmare for a gap shooter because they're constantly moving, uh, not really giving you, you only got like a certain amount of time or opportunities to be able to pull back and get a shot off and you know, trying to aim and trying to get settled and it it's a lot, but as far as the animal not moving around as much, you know, a gap shooter should do fairly well hunting. But when it gets to distances, we don't control the distance of where the animal comes in. It comes in where it wants to. And I think a disadvantage for some gap shooters would be be able to, you know, if their air tip's not on the animal itself, uh, if it came in close and that's the only shot you're gonna have and it's gonna walk off, you're gonna be basically holding your air tip on the ground and some people I've talked to just cannot get it past their their mind to hold their air tip on the ground and to be able to impact to where their target is. They know their gap, but they just can't in their mind hold it there dead on the ground and not on the animal. So uh, that takes away a, a, you know, an advantage for that type. Uh, you know, most of them, I guess, would be looking for 15, 20, 25 yards. I mean, me, I want to get them close as I can. Uh, like last year, last deer season, I was, I was within 15 yards of the deers, of the deer that I've had shots on. So, I mean, you know, I can get close but uh you know if you got so close and you got to hold your air tip on the ground it'll mess with your mind so that's the only thing there you know with that and moving if you're not on a food plot and you're on a travel corridor or so uh funnels where they're constantly moving you know you might you know get their attention a little bit and go meh and they they're only gonna give you a certain shot so now you got an alert deer uh, <clears throat> so there's gonna be in a hunting situation that's where you're gonna be disadvantaged uh, in that particular situation besides the food plot uh, 
and like I've said before, you know, each shooting style, whether it's instinctives, you know, string walking, face walking, gap shooting, each one has disadvantages and one doesn't triumph over another. Certain situations, uh, one excels, but overall, either one don't excel over the other. So I'm not here to, you know, give out bad information. This is just what I've gathered on my own and the way and the way I've chose to shoot from here on out and where it's going to give me the greater disadvantage or not the greater disadvantage but the greater advantage in where it counts and I'm more of a hunter than target but you know <clears throat> I'm not worried about scores I'm worried about getting something to eat but uh and I, I do shoot and compete and you know I try to do try to get the highest score out of anybody you know I got a competitive type spirit and but it's all fun you know and so I hope this helps and for you new people you know don't let somebody determine whether you shoot any whatever style it is uh, make up your own mind form your own opinions and you know you can talk to a few people I've talked to several some you know on the instinctive side well that's the only way to do it is just look at your target and let it go and then you got people that are aimers that this is the only way accurate way to shoot a bow and it's not so uh as far as you know i can care less the way you shoot if you're happy with it and you're accurate that's what all that matters and i will be keep reiterating this comment as i do my videos so that way you know i'm not putting out that i'm putting down you know, aiming methods over instinctive because that's the way I shoot. I mean, that ain't so. Uh, uh, you know, each one has its place, and that's what I've always believed in. You know, and you know, the more you know, the better off you're going to be in certain situations. So, uh, I hope this helps. I hope y'all have a great day, and God bless.